We're here with Steven from Decimated. How are you, Steven? Doing great. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. How's your day going at Crypto Expo? Yeah, it's good. You know, networking, getting to know new companies in space. It's interesting, yeah. And so what's a gaming company looking for at these types of events? Uh, we're looking for brand awareness, investors, uh, people who are interested in buying the tokens, and uh, yeah, just networking with people that are interested in the space. And tell me a little bit more about Decimated and Fracture Labs. Yeah, so Decimated is a third-person survival role-playing game where players can earn cryptocurrency and buy digitally scarce virtual items, so then they can trade in or outside of the platform. So it's kind of like a third-person open-world survival game, kind of similar to DayZ, uh, Armor Wasteland, and Escape from Tarkov and uh, players can earn tokens inside the game and compete with other players or they can team up and uh, and earn rewards in the game. And why did you decide to make it a Web3 enabled game? So we started in 2018 before a lot of people were talking about GameFi and uh, Web3 gaming. I think we were a bit too early to the space and I kind of saw it as being the future of, uh, of, of video games. Not necessarily a future of video games that's going to replace the traditional video game market, but just as a different monetization strategy where you're giving ownership to the players so that then they can actually sell their virtual items again after they've been playing the game for, say, 500 hours, for example. So we wanted to build a platform that was a fun game to play and a fun game to watch, but also giving the uh, ownership to the players themselves. And what trends in the GameFi space are you seeing right now given the current market conditions? I think that people are realizing that it's not all just about tokens and uh, and play-to-earn mechanics. It's about the game and the gameplay being fun. Um, if you want to have mass adoption of these types of games, it needs to target the traditional gaming market. There also needs to be no friction whatsoever with uh, understanding how the whole thing works. Right now, a lot of games require you to connect a wallet up to your browser and then deposit certain tokens for gas fees and all this kind of stuff. It's just really, really complicated for the average person. You need to make it as simple for your grandmother to use so then people will actually play your game and, and enjoy it and have fun. But I think that the most important thing that people realize is if if you enable a game, which a lot of people talk about metaverse, but I think that the, the idea of meta gameplay has always been in games since the 90s. Um, so giving people the ability to customize their character, customize a vehicle, customize a weapon and personalize their own experience, building bases, customizing apartments is something that uh, a lot of people want to do. That's where the money is, making games free to play and then monetizing the content creation, user-generated content, etc. And like you said, it's the ownership aspect that really attracts and keeps maybe those those players, no? Yeah, absolutely. I think that uh, a lot of people spend uh, a lot of their time in front of the computer or on their mobile phones. So for them to actually have their own personal avatar that they can express themselves with other people online is, uh, you know, we want to enable that. So I think that's, that's what people really want. And I think that when people talk about Web3 gaming and metaverse and video games, is giving the people the freedom of expression and somewhere to kind of hang out in the virtual space. Thank you, Steven. Gosh.